This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, Netflix.com, and eMusic. 110 degrees. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm getting like sweat down the back. You know, I'm like the sweat trail of sweat. In the taint. It's um, the sweat back trail. The sweat, I hate the sweat back trail. Oh. Welcome to a special summer edition of iFanboy. I'm Ron. I'm hot. And I'm Josh. I'm Connor. We're out at the grill. It's summertime. And we have some emails to answer. We thought we'd throw some, some food cooking and some email answering. And we some do love our talking. grilling. That's one of the, the iFanboy pastimes yep. is the grilling. And we thought we should mention um, it's really actually quite hot today. It's uh, hot as balls. It's if summer. you can see on the high def, Ron getting a nice sweat going. I um, sweat rag. He's got a sweat rag. It's actually a hundred and was it six degrees in the shade? It's it's a hundred and four degrees right now. Right. And it's a hundred exactly a hundred degrees in front of the grill right now. But 110 before, degrees. It was over 110 before. Yeah. yeah. So. so if you're in Europe, it's about 40 degrees Celsius. 48, that's, isn't it? No, 40. 40. Oh, okay. And uh, that's really hot. So and that it's not, sucks. It's not, it's not natural. Yeah. It ain't right. So you may watch us wilt and die during this episode. But yeah, thank you, Al Gore. So well, before we get going, we he thought we'd do it. We I thought we him. would tell you about what we got going on the grill here first. Um, Ron, what do we got? Well, we got over here. We got some uh, chicken wings going uh, with different kinds of sauces. Um, Josh has got some hot dogs. Just some regular old natural casing hot dogs. I got the top shelf stuff. I see a lonely onion over there. Yeah. <laughs> I like to grill an onion. I have. I have here. Oh, I have an onion on a skewer that's been treated with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Nice. I was afraid of the skewer uh, bursting into flame. Okay. And what do we got over here? And then finally, we got some Italian sweet sausage. Uh, when you're doing a sausage, you got your spicy, you got your chorizo, you, and you got your sweet. You got a whole bunch of different sauces. I like the sweet. Right. Okay. Call me crazy. So that's what we started and with. Of course, some, that would mean I like the spicy. There'll be a couple of more things we'll put on in a bit, but we'll we'll get that going. We'll do some emails. And a little little detail about the food. And there. first, a little beer. Nice. So I'm looking forward to the emails. This All right. Our lot. first email is from Alan, who is Kimbo on the website. And his email is, uh, what would you say is the current demographic or age range mainstream superhero comics are aimed at today? And he says when he first started reading funny books, he was around 9 or 10. He felt like superhero books was, were, were aimed at his age when he started um, with all the funny costumes and the shiny, you know. And they still are. And being an adult now, he doesn't mind that they've matured along with him, but he wonders, um, you know, can kids read comics? And he says he's got a friend with a kid who he would never, he said he would never give his kid superhero comics to read. So... What is the age range for comic? What are they? Who are they aimed at? It, it depends uh, on the comic that you're talking about. I mean, there are superhero comics that are not for kids, but there are superhero comics. I believe that Marvel Adventures Spider-Man or Spider-Man Adventures is one of the, the highest-selling books at Marvel, if not the. The whole family line is very successful. Right. No, the Mar Spider-Man. Marvel family. Adventures Spider-Man is the top-selling yeah. book at Marvel, even though it's not. Uh, diamonds because it's still, it's still outside of diamonds. Right. It's Scholastic and other yeah. um, kids you know, publications. But that's that's the really no, different. The, the DC and the Johnny DC, right, the Teen Titans and Super but Friends. That's not the focus. No, it's not. I mean, it's 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 almost like an afterthought. I think these days. I think comics. It's an afterthought in, that makes a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. In the last in the, in the last twenty or thirty years, comics I think have shifted from being a kids' medium as those kids have grown up and it's matured with them. So honestly, I think now the demographic for comics are like sixteen to forty-five, fifty. I mean, I think that's their sweet spot. Because if you look at us, we're in our 30s. Our friends are in their 20s and 30s. I know very, I know Hank in Chicago, and maybe like two other kids <laughs> who are teenagers who are buying comics these days. Right. Um, I th and I think part of that is because you know a lot of the themes are very mature. A lot of the things, and and I don't know if the comics we were reading at 12 were out of our league, but I don't think they were. I think they were. You I know, think kids are probably a little more mature. They probably would demand more from it anyway. Yeah. I don't know. It's like it's like the question of did comics change because kids weren't buying them, or did they just keep making them for the same people you know were you making that like the kid who was you were 12 right the comics are still for my age but right. i'm older so well i think the thing about kids is and ron you might want to wipe yourself down a little bit um Thanks. just because you look like you're about Ooh. to die it's like question one Ooh. um kids never like to read stuff for kids kids no. kids want to read stuff meant for older people because they want to yeah. feel older and cooler so i think when we were kids the comics were probably not meant i mean i started reading at five you know in kindergarten they weren't yeah. meant for me but but they were meant for a little 10 or 12 right um, so I think there's always been sort of a gap between who's reading and who's not reading. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah. It's hot. I forgot to turn my cell phone off. I just did that. <laughs> anyway, nice. next question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that, yeah. So that's, the age range is older than kids, but I, I think kids can still read But the thing is, though, that now, and this never was before, it's important, there's comics for everybody now. Yeah. And while, so the main continuity of the 616 universe may not necessarily be for kids. Right. Like it was, 
there's kids comics, you know. I don't think it's not for kids though. I mean, no, I, I agree with you. And, but but like, I think but it's not for kids. You can buy stuff up and what down do you, the what age do you, spectrum. What do you call a kid though? I call a kid um, 11, 12. I, no, I call it's a kid, totally for a kid. I call a kid age. five to six to to twelve. Twelve is totally appropriate for comics now. Mm. Those kids go to R-rated action movies. Depends they see, on the kid, they, see, I guess. they see stuff just as bad as the, in, in any comic. Yeah, I don't know anything about kids. Those are the movies that make all that money that the kids go to. All the action summer blockbuster movies. Yeah, but I still, I, I, I if I'm, I'm wondering what I was reading at twelve and whether or not you know. That was Omaha the Cat, cat Dancer. I was reading Mike Grell's Green Arrow, which had nudity and cursing and... And that explains a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kids out. shouldn't be coddled, is my opinion. <laughs> All okay. right, so let's um, talk about the wings, Ron. What do we got? We have two different sauces on the wings. Okay, yeah, well, what we've got here is on the left side, we've got um, some wings that are using a, a brand of sauce that uh, you can call called bone sucking sauce. Uh, for those of you in the New York metro area that might have a Stu Leonard's near you, you can get it from there. We'll throw a label up and you can check it out. Um, it's actually made for ribs, but we found that throwing it on wings, as well as, as well as with a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Wings have bones. Yeah, true. Totally. sucking those bones, too. Um, and then next to them, though, because I do have a sweet tooth, as we mentioned with the sweet sausage, um, some honey barbecue, because um, I always think that's pretty good. we got to be careful with the honey barbecue sauce, though, because it burns really hot. Yeah. Once it hits the flame, it... it, it well, once it burns, out. we can move it up, but also it's nice to have a little variety in your wing tasting. Absolutely. Um, so that's good. So those were in sitting in sauce in big bowls for a couple hours before we put them on the grill. Did yeah. you put a rub on them at all? No rub. No, no rub. No rub. No rub. I have a sweat no, rag of my own. No time for rub, Dr. Jones. Oh. It's going to be a lot of wiping. In the yeah, there is. It's really Woo! hot. When it's I, 104 according to the thermometer. When right I moved now. into my apartment, she was showing it to us, and it was like this hot, and the woman the whole time was going like this. <laughs> and she had a little t piece of tissue. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, so we got the wings pretty much taken over half the grill. We're going to have to put your burgers on soon, Josh. Yes, yes. So I'll make some room for you. So your burgers will be a little honey barbecue flavored. Hey. What can you do? That'll be all right. So the next email is from Ian from the UK. Who uh, is, Ian. Who is Ian on the website. Ian and Crab. Ian um, <laughs> will appreciate that it is 40 degrees Celsius uh, right now. He says, I have a question about comics in general. I'm looking to find a new series to get into, preferably one that is def definitive end, although I'm not against getting into a new series that's still ongoing. Basically, I'm looking for a long-running series that I can read in one go. Thanks to you guys, I've collected and read Preacher, Why the Last Man, Strangers in Paradise, Watchmen, which you all loved, Sandman, which you didn't really love. He prefers DC, Vertigo, and indie stuff, but I'll give anything a try as long as it's a great story and characters you can care about. Uh, so he wants like a story, a complete story. Well, he doesn't want an ongoing tale. Of I will give you the from the if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, if you like Vertigo, you've really only scratched the surface of some of the some of the things that are available there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the first couple of things that come to mind would be Transmetropolitan that ran into the 70s. It had a definitive end. Yep. It reads straight through. It's very good all the way through. It's more of an adult flavor. Um, it, it's great. It's by Warren Ellis and Derek Robertson. That's, that's Warren Ellis's best thing ever. It's, yes, yeah, it's it Warren really Ellis's is. best work. Um, beautiful. I mean, like, it's actually Derek Robertson's best work as well. Yes. Uh, Rodney Ramos is the inker on that. Yeah. And beautiful those two. Beautiful links. I mean, like, you actually notice when you look at a lot of Derek Robertson's other work, you look at what he's doing now in The Boys. Um, the Transmetropolitan stuff is, is a little cleaner. Yep. It's uh, Ramos really added a lot to that, uh, and that's just a great a great series all the way through. Another one you might want to look at, even though you didn't love Sandman, uh, is uh, Lucifer. Lucifer ran to 75 issues, I believe. Is anybody else doing like five-year definitive runs besides? Like it so feels Vertigo? like it's just Vertigo. Hmm, maybe. Does no one else do that? Well, I mean, the, th the problem is, is that you got what Kirkman's doing with Invincible and Walking Dead, which yeah. is going to be compared to what they did at Virgo, except that he hasn't set an endpoint yet. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because he needs a paycheck. Right. Um, and as long as we're buying it, he'll keep writing it. And um, he's still got stories to tell, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, you know, um, Lucifer. Hellblazer uh, might be better than Lucifer. Hellblazer doesn't have an ending? Yeah, but it, I think it's written in such a way that you could stop reading it, right? I mean, it's not like it has ongoing tale of. It's not like a never-ending battle. Well, if you but if you want a definitive end, one, Lucifer is one of my favorite series of all time. I haven't talked about it a lot. But he also says it doesn't have to have a definitive end. Okay, well, well, I, I've got one that has. But a, that was my answer. I'm sorry. I've, I've got one that has. <laughs> hot. The, I've got one that has a definitive end. Unfortunately, um, the Max. Uh, Sam Keith published through Image. I think it's actually now been reprinted through DC. Um, but that had a definitive end, and if you like the kind of you know Vertigo kind of differently kind of stories, um, art was beautiful. Story was very psychological. Um, sometimes uh, not a whole lot of sense, but um, I, it's one that I think has gotten forgotten over the years. And so is know, Lucifer I, more grounded than Sandman, right? It's yes, more, much more. It's, it's uh, uh, Lucifer. Suggestion doesn't. It, it's, <laughs> well, I, I have a question for him. I'm gonna get back to you. It's start Mike Carey. Yeah. Uh, he it's, it, Lucifer is in Sandman. He's the one yeah. who tricks uh, Dream into and he takes off. He's dead the devil. Right. Um. And but it, and it takes Lucifer as a, a as a man as a character 
Uh, really an interesting take on the guy, and then it's kind of, it's, there's a little girl, and she ends up very, very powerful. Um, and it, it goes 75 issues. It is one of my favorite series of all time. Beautiful art by Peter Kelly and uh, Ryan Gross. Mm. Or maybe I've got that backwards, transposed. <laughs> um, gorgeous. I mean, like, yep. I, I loved that book. I loved it more than Sandman. I wasn't paying attention to anything you said because I was looking at the wings. They look awesome. They do. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Um, no, but I think, I think that might be a good shot. I think uh, I think maybe Hel he's from the UK, maybe Hellblazer. We'll, we'll, we'll connect I'm, with him. I'm but the Max might be good because that's. Throw me a bone. It's weird. <laughs> I don't like the Max. Max is weird. Oh, I can't wholeheartedly yeah, uh, so endorse it. Was it was fun. It was fun. Check out the Should first. those wings come off? Yeah, maybe. I was thinking that. Um, check out the first. Check out the first trade. See if it's up your alley. I mean, I mean, the art alone is really, really interesting. If nothing else, if you uh, like Preacher, read the Ennis uh, uh, Dylan Hellblade. That's what I was. That's why I thought of it. Right. No, of they're, that. they're awesome. But they're. There's little stories. They're not. Right. It's not a big ending, but each story tends to have an ending, right. so that's good. So we got wings that are. Looks like they're. Those first batches, half of them are done. Those couple sausages are done. Right. We're gonna take a quick sponsor break and take some of this food off the grill. And when we come back. We'll have more email and more food. Get reliable, secure web hosting from GoDaddy.com, which includes 99.9 .9 uptime, 24/7 support, and free access to hosting connection. The place to install over 30 free applications, sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting and fast and easy website builders and much more. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy helps you protect your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your own virtual or dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be and worry that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. Looking to drive viewers to your video content? Then get a .tv domain name and stand out from the crowd. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Tell your story to the world with .me, the top-level domain that's all about you. Land Rush is only open until July 17th. Should the same domain be requested multiple times, an auction will be held to claim the name. So act now and create a unique, personalized space on the internet with .me. Tune in June 29th to July 5th to see GoDaddy girl Amanda Beard as she makes her bid for Beijing in the U.S. Swim Team Time Trials. And don't forget, coupon code iFanboy gets you 10% off all of your purchases at GoDaddy.com. Thanks to Netflix for sponsoring this episode of iFanboy. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. The Netflix plan starts as low as $4.99. As a new member, you can get a no-risk two-week free trial membership. Just check out www.netflix.com slash iFanboy, and remember to type in that www when using this code. iFanboy is partnered with eMusic to create a hand-picked playlist of some of our favorite songs. Visit www.emusic.com slash iFanboy, download the songs, and let us know what you think. We'll be creating new eMusic playlists, and when we do, we'll tell you about them on our show. eMusic is offering 50 free songs to iFanboy viewers when they visit www.emusic.com slash iFanboy and sign up for a free trial. eMusic delivers songs in the universally compatible MP3 format, which means your music plays on your iPod or Zune with no restrictions or DRM hassles. Visit www.emusic.com slash iFanboy today. So we're back with some uh, wings coming off the grill. Josh hot is going to hot wings, hot wings. Not Josh, spicy, but maybe those sausage should move up too. Yeah, that's a good. Idea. Um, Josh, well, you got a plate of food here. What do you? I decided to go with the uh, All American Burger. Um, I've got 80% lean chuck. The mm. Thing about burgers is you don't want to go and buy. You sure, you don't want to buy the ultra the lean, pre, the, the 90% and up. Like it may sound healthier, but it doesn't make a good burger. And if you're going to eat a burger, just eat the burger. So you want the one with more fat in it because it's going to have more flavor. Otherwise, what about those pre-prepared patties? You can do that. The actual good part about that is a lot of people handle it too much. They, He's meanwhile having a big problem. I needed there. to use that. It's okay. It's okay. You can't get to that one, can you? I got it. Um, Always have a fork. <laughs> oh, the juices are um, going to escape. Basically, I just I just put salt and pepper on each side. I put a little bit of cayenne pepper and then uh, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce over it. I didn't handle it very much because um, I, I don't want to break up the meat and mush it up at all. I just want it to, to be on its own thing. All right, so why don't you... Um, Put those on the grill. My filthy, filthy spatula. It's all it's all protein, right? I'll move on to the next email while you guys do that. Uh, the next email is from Ben from St. Louis, Missouri, and he's Neb on the uh, website, and he says, uh, it's recently begun to bother me that some comics are tipping over the 2.99 mark. For example, this week I bought eight books, but two of them were 3.99. One of them was 4.99. The other was 5.99. Now I know this is 
pos I know this is the pop, possibly to cover the extra money a company may invest in extra pages, uh, etc. But I felt like 499 for 48 page Superman annual is a bit much, especially when the ones before were only a buck more. Anyways, my question is this: At what po price point would you guys stop buying comics? It's obvious that we may be moving to 399 in the mark in the future. How much would each issue have to be before you guys dropped out of the game? Ah, the price question. Well, um, this is prescient because I think we're starting to see the tipping to 399 now. A lot of the more the books are coming yep. out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what basically you got is that if a pretty a good selling book from the top publishers is always pretty much 299 is the is the going rate. But you're seeing the, the expanded it, pages, or you're seeing the book books that don't sell a lot going up to the 399 and higher point. You're seeing the um, cardstock covers adding a buck to the price when, when it's been is, 299 for a while, and yeah. the cardstock thing is an excuse. I think yeah, I agree. Like I agree. it's going to cost them an extra eight cents. Yeah. So they're going to charge you an extra dollar. Well, the, th the thing is, it's important to note that that I mean, inflation is happening. Paper co costs are going up. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's not. You know that's not a right, a, but it's interesting to see what they're doing. The majority of comics have been printed in Canada, which call, which allow for easy shipping and things like that. You're noticing a lot of trade business stuff like that actually go to China. Um, I know several major publishers are now working with printers in China, and so now literally, if you're waiting for the Walking Dead hardcover, it's on the slow boat from China. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so they're doing what they can to deal with it. I don't know if they're going to move issues to China or not because I don't see how the ship how that could actually be, f be fulfilled. No, it'd be but, too long. But I, I agree with you. I think that saying the card stock. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're, it's basic economics, if they're moving enough uh, enough units, that can justify the price, and it has to do with sales. Um, I don't. I mean, Tom Spurgeon at the Comics Reporter wrote a blog post a couple a couple of months ago that was about the price of comics, and that kind of woke a lot of people up online about it. And it's. I mean, it's. I mean, even we buy a lot of comics, and it's hurting my wallet. I mean, big time. And his brain. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, but the question is, is what what does it take for you? At what point do you say this is too much? At what point is yeah. it not worth the value? Because honestly, a 22 page comic book for five bucks. For five bucks. Yeah. At, at eight minutes, maybe. No good. Maybe. This is more one more reason why I this. Why I want to switch to trades, and it's difficult. Because or digital, we'll, even. Because what we what we do, it's difficult to do that. Almost impossible. But the the money value is just not there when you're buying a. Issue all right, three hundred three ninety nine. We're getting to four dollars now for a comic that's twenty two pages that you're done with in five mm -hmm. minutes. As opposed, to you, you guys get... need to take your time. This says the guy who you rushes... read twice as fast as oh me. Oh my god! Do. Oh, but I do you read multiple times. I read no. multiple issues multiple times. I got a stack of trades. Yeah. To read. Oh, oh. And then you buy a trade for fifteen dollars and it's six issues. That's the yeah. you know it's, it's there's no comparison. And, and you see you see image doing things like like with Dynamo Five and with um, another title I forget which one. Um, they did the nine ninety nine trades. Right. Um, yeah. Which were which Suburban Glamour. Vertigo is doing it's that. Suburban, also. Well, Suburban Glamour was nine ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, and proof. Yeah, proof was the one. That was the one I couldn't remember. Which was like it was like the first four issues. The something, first five. First five. Yeah, something. It's odd. a good deal. Suburban yeah. Glamour was four. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the other side of that, though, is that for the, just to get to make it to trade, they have to have high enough sales and issues, so they could be shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, the thing is, I think we all know that there's a, there's a basic uh, economic thing that's broken in comics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people are pushing to trade, but they say they need to do the monthly issues to keep the writer and the artist, you know, kind of, you know, in, like, paid. paid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they need to... Well, that's I, indie books. No, that's all books. All the books. All well, the books, even Vertigo. All right. Yeah, well, why, Vertigo. why wouldn't Vertigo... Vertigo all takes a loss. Right, well, no, Vertigo of all imprints should be moving directly to trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, I and, can see that. Although and, I love my scalped issues. Right. So the question is that if Ex Exterminators was in trade, do you think it would still be going? It's I not know. anyway. Right. I know, but if it, it's, it could. I know, but I'm saying issues. it did fail either way. It right. failed in, in whichever. You know, I don't know. It's it's a really interesting question because I love this thing. Yeah. Obviously, for us, it's a, kind of a different than most of the regular consumers. It's our job. Right. So, I don't know. The, you always gonna have the hardcore guys or girls, well, either way, who are always gonna buy. The comics, no matter what the cost, you know, mm -hmm. that's just they're always going to be there. The question is, are there enough of them? I don't think there are. I think you're gonna, you think you lose a lot of casual readers with the price goes way up, right? Which is what they and, want, which is what they need. Or you lose a lot of casual readers in that they cut way, way back on their buying. I think if it went up to they four cut bucks, their books in half, you know, they yeah. If it went up to four bucks, which it's probably going to, mm -hmm. we would probably deal. You know what I mean? It's like gas. Yeah, right. exactly. gas has gone up. It's four, you know, or whatever. You have to deal. Yeah, but people drive less. Yeah, and you don't have right. to read comics. People who are Back after a few years, don't have to read comics every month. They can stop buying them. Right. Whereas people like right. us who are crazy will keep buying them. Do you remember the jump from a buck to a buck twenty-five? It was traumatic. It was traumatic, but we kept them buying. At a buck twenty-five, comics still yeah, it was still viable. Well, in nineteen eighty-six, it was yeah. at uh, four dollars a comic. Get over there. Yeah. I'm already. I haven't spent a. I haven't had a fifty-dollar week. Oh, I'm. You know. I know all that all too well. So, all right. So we got. Josh, how's it looking? 
How's your They're cooking okay? a little faster than I would have thought. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll be good. honest. This is well, it's nuclear out here. It's 109 degrees now at the. At the Actually, we didn't even turn the grill on. No. Yeah. Um, this is purely the heat from the sun. <laughs> I want to talk about the sausages real quick. Go ahead. Um, so those of you, we're, we're in the New York metro area. I'm Italian. Connor's Irish. Um, we enjoy good sausage and peppers in the backyard, have for years. Important thing to note My with sausage. city doesn't matter. Well, you don't go to the ball games and eat sausage and peppers with us. That's um, why I didn't think of you. You want it beforehand. I, um, I sauteed up some um, onions and green peppers um, in some olive oil and some garlic. Um, sauteed it and then and paprika, which I didn't. Well, expect. then at very towards the very end, I throw in a little paprika. That's my little touch. Um, paprika gives the onions a nice little golden kind of um, a view. Um, get sausage, get some pepper onions, put it on some Italian bread. We have some Italian bread here. Yeah. Oh baby! Oh, some good bread. That's gonna be fantastic. Today. It's gonna be very, very good. So um, I'm excited for these sausages. Yeah. that's for sure. Well, when you go to a ball game here in the states, go to a baseball game, Ron and I like to do that and have sausage and peppers. So it's nice to be able to do it yourself and get a nice, yeah. You know, See, I flavor. I was talking because I've made sausage and peppers a lot. I cook them, I sauté them so they don't get mushy. I like a nice crisp vegetable. Well, the the, the, the onions and peppers. Yeah, that's what right. I mean. Yeah. Um, I have some hot dogs I here because I, prefer I like a hot dog. Yeah. Um, one thing you can do, which I should have and I wasn't thinking, is if you put a little olive oil or, or actually vegetable oil because it doesn't burn as soon over it, it makes the outside nice and crispy. I forgot mm. to do that, but uh, you would never get a job at Grace Papaya. I wouldn't. What's that one random rogue chicken wing doing back there? I missed it. There rogue wing. Right. Okay, let's move along to Kevin from Virginia. And he says, I have a question regarding Batman R.I.P. You guys were at New York Comic Con this year and they were passing out these promotional pins and pictures of Nightwing, Robin, Jason Todd, and Hush saying, I am Batman on each pin. What are your opinions on those pins and what DC is saying, that there's going to be four candidates and where the heck did Hush come from? My friend bet me $50, 50, cent, $50 that you guys will not read this email in your podcast or video show. Please read this email. You'll donate half of it to iFanboy if you, if nice. you do. Nice. We can be bought. That's we are, we are not bought. above yeah, bribery. We are not above that. So, and you know what? <laughs> Honestly, you're probably spending too much. But now... I think it brings up an interesting point. I think the viral stuff that they're doing more is good. Yeah, I agree. They're doing a lot more like the viral video campaigns. They're handing out a lot more pins. People love pins. People, People love, love free swag yeah. at the conventions. Totally. But those pins went fast. People love having them on their on their. If you remember the New York Con, I picked up one that said it said I am Batman and it had a picture of Tim Drake. Tim Drake as Robin. And Tim I, Wayne now. So. And is Tim Wayne? Oh, that's creepy. And even um, I said to you, Connor, I'm like, what's this mean? Yeah. And I don't read Batman, so it got me thinking. I think it's a great idea. I love. I mean. I mean, it, it harkens back to the reign of the Superman. Yep. When Superman died, we had four new Superman. Yep. Um, it harkens back to when uh, the Spider-Man, remember when Spider-Man quit and the four different Spider-Mans came yep. out? I like Slingers. The, Slingers, yeah. Um, I like the idea. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's my obscure reference for this show. Um, so I like the idea of not Ricochet. knowing. Ricochet. <laughs> I, like I like the idea of not knowing who it's going to be. Right. Um, well, I think that's that's something less is, less interesting to me as the, as the marketing side. Is yeah, that, well, that's, yeah. With budgets and the economy as it is, Little things like they that. They need to do more stuff like that. Yeah. Hand out no, more we'll pins. Virally, look at the success Marvel had with the Civil War. Civil War sucked, but if you looked online... Those the, banners the, were genius. The banners were genius. They were great, you know, and they're doing. They're trying to do it a little with the Secret Invasion, but, um, and they're doing, Marvel's doing a lot of stuff with uh, MySpace, yeah. unfortunately, and... It's funny, because um, that actually became a larger percentage of the fun than actually reading the books. Right. Yeah. Like, like m they got so much more mileage of just brand recognition, of just everybody putting that in their... Well, the speculation's thing. always more fun than the actual payoff, because yeah, exactly. it cause just That's always true. is. Yeah. Are any then we can put more on? Yeah, I'm going to put more on. I just want to start eating. I know, me too. They look fantastic. All right, well, let's get through these emails. All right, um, so do we need to talk about anything more about the food? Are we good or everything looks good? Generally, you want to be careful around fire and flame. If you're under 18, get your parents' permission. Always let the meat rest. Yeah, that's Here's something people don't tell you. It's 102 and 109 by the grill, which is I'm just taking my awesome. burgers off. One thing that always happens is that people you constantly them? overcook burgers. You just want the outside cooked. You can keep the inside relatively. Burgers, anything inside meat is safe. Everything outside needs to be cooked. The inside can be raw on beef. It doesn't really matter. It's raw! It's raw! So what about that last one? That one uh, was on the less hot part, oh. so it's not as cooked. I thought you were going to poison me. I was. This is, this is Connor's uh, botulism burger. Nice. I asked specifically for the botulism burger beforehand. Make sure you tell your cook what you want. That way you can get it. What do you like? What do you like? Do you like it uh, medium? I like it medium rare. The older I get, the less cooked I want it. Yeah, when I was a kid, I, I was always well done, mm -hmm. and now I'm now I'm 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 venturing into rare territory. Oh yeah, yeah. The pinker the better. When I was a kid, my mom always I wanted mean, it rare, and I was always like, ah. Now yeah. occasionally I'll be like, yeah, give me a little bit a little bit of pink in the middle. Yeah, a little bit of pink never hurt anybody. Yeah. Pink is medium. <laughs> oh man. All right then. All right. Didn't Our next that. question is from Jen D from Portland. All right. And she her first she has two questions. Her first says. 
I'm reading all the absolute Sandman volumes as they come out, and I'm loving them. I've been, I've, uh, I've seen Ooh. some dreaming and endless trades that look like they expound upon Neil Gaiman's universe, though they're not written by him. I don't want to sully my love of this world by reading something crappy, however. I feel the need to read everything because I don't want to miss out on something important in the dreaming continuity. So, have you read, <laughs> have you read any of these trades, and if so, are they worth it? That's genius. Does that sound familiar to you? Someone worrying about continuity in the Sandman. I don't think I've ever heard of that. That's, That's funny. Awesome. That's funny. Uh, I'm Josh, still Mike, so I'm cool. Josh, have you read? I have read some. As By the way, wait. Turn around to the camera, because you already sweat? did. Look at that nice, nice. 100 degree sweat. Who wants to give me a hug? It's a hot one. Um, yeah. I think I got one, too, actually. Ooh, you're spotty. Yeah, nice. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a butterfly back there. Um, as we talked about earlier, Lucifer. Yeah. Spinoff, fantastic. That was Mike Carey, right? Uh, that was Mike Carey. Really good. But uh, you haven't read the Dream, Dreamer of the Endless spinoff. I have not. Well, those are... No. I've read some things. There's a lot more. Um, there was the House of Mystery, which is out now. Yep. Uh, that's uh, sort of a spinoff by Bill Willingham and yep. uh, Matthew Sturgis. It's pretty good. It's tied in. Like, it doesn't... If you don't read it, you're not going to lose anything from the original stories. But if you want a little more, you can get it. It's like any, any spinoff, right. really. So the question about spinoffs is, uh, are they good? Do we like spinoffs? Do we get nervous when they come out? Sometimes. Have there been any horrible ones? There's certainly been Because you loved Lucifer. Lucifer was a spinoff. I loved Lucifer. You know what? The thing is that Sandman's had some really Jack of quality. Fables was a good one. Jack of Fables was an incredible spinoff of Fables. It was almost every bit as good as the other. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit, you know... But it, I was—I expected it to be awful. I was like, "Oh, come on, they can't right. do this," and it was good. Um, you know, there was a Sandman Mystery Theater. Yeah. A lot and of that was like that. that was that was the old right, Sandman, exactly. But that wasn't yeah. Sandman. But it was, was somehow related. There was um, uh, t the Tim Hunter stories, uh, yeah. book, of, book of Secrets. Well, they had turned, they, there was a Sandman Cottage Industry. When yeah, Sandman was yeah, there. and and you know what? A lot of them are pretty good. You yeah. know, if you think about it, you know, Hellblazer is a spin-off of Swamp Thing. Nice. Um, you know, it, it can happen really well or it can happen really bad. There's the Infinity War. That sucked. Secret Wars That's a too. sequel, not a spin-off, well, really. Well, yeah, no, I mean, if you want to talk about spin-offs. difference between sequel and spin-off. I think, I think I come in here as the, as the king of spin-offs. The spin offs I mean, well, I mean, you look at... You look Batman, at the Batman and the spin-off books too. are I mean, all various qualities. Like, if you, if you look at currently right now, Uncanny X-Men is the flagship title of the X-Men, and we've got... And, and a, a multitude of spin-offs, including Young X-Men, which hasn't proved Mark Guggenheim writing it, which hasn't proved to be very good. Um, X-Force with art by Clayton Crane, which is near unreadable. Um, so yeah, <laughs> people so, love that book. People love it, and the thing is, like, I remember growing up reading the X-Men books and like the Gambit miniseries and the Wolverine series, and you feel the need to read everything. Here's the thing, though. And, hang on, okay. and it takes it takes a it takes a long time for you to realize that you don't need to read every spinoff. That just because it exists in the area, if if it's important from a continuity standpoint, and a book refers to it, they'll refer you to it in the book that they're referring it to. There's so. a huge difference. And now you can just look it up. Yeah. There's a huge difference between spinoffs in the X-Men world and the Batman world and a self-contained sort of universe that's creator-controlled like Sandman no or Fable. Yes, it is, because you're not going to get 14 Fable spinoffs. You're going to get the one. If Fable, Fable sold enough comics, they would do 14 Fable spinoffs. It does He's sell right. enough comics. No. Who's right? Josh not like X-Men. Right? No, I agree with him. Yeah. No, but what I mean is you don't need to keep... You can't physically keep track of all the X-Men spinoffs where you can... Read all the Fable spinoffs. You're lucky because they're, they're smart enough to limit to the books that they are. But if, like again, if Fables was as big as X-Men was or is, they would have a million and one books. They would. I um I can't read the second question. Someone else read it. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, we're moving on. It says, "Why is Connor?" So did you plant that? I did not plant it. Why is Connor so amazing? Because. Yeah, I've slept in the same room with him. It's not amazing. What is it? I don't know what that means. <laughs> it just got weird. All right, so just now. <laughs> I've been in jacuzzis with the man. <laughs> I've been so weird. all over the world. It's true. Is it not true? So you should know how amazing I am then. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the bread quickly. What are you doing to the bread here? Just giving it a light toast. Yeah, but how long do you keep it on there? Not very. It's so you... off, off the off the grill, off the heat, off the direct heat. Mm -hmm. Last year it was funny. We had to do a lot of gr grill closing because we did steaks. Yes. Um, but this year we got all fast cooking. And it's 112 degrees outside, so... And we're so. paying the price. Actually, it's not 112, it's 109. 109 next to the grill. So it's 109 right here. Yeah. It's 102. 102 over there. Or where I am, barely in the camera shot, I'm 102 over here. Actually, it is cooler right here. I'm going to stand and read the ca yeah, off camera. Yeah, I'm going to read this off camera. That's fine. Uh, Eric says, I have a problem and I'm turning to you for advice. It seems that we are in a particularly great period of comics history where there are many well-written books with terrific art. My problem is that I cannot seem to keep back. up. Every year I try to edit down the number of books I'm getting, but as soon as I feel that I have it down to must-read books, before I know it, the number has swelled to an unmanageable amount. My favorite books, Fables, Invincible, Iron Fist, etc., I try to only get in trade, but the single issues are very tempting. 
I find myself skimming through books just to get the stack down without truly enjoying them. How do you keep the number of books down to an amount that you can really read and appreciate? Also, do you have any tried and true rules for dropping a title? And then there's a follow-up I'll ask after. Okay. Well, first of all, don't start a comic book show. <laughs> because that is a pain in the ass, and they don't let you drop anything if you have these two guys who are like, oh no, we have to buy everything. Uh, two, I hear you. I mean, my list has grown a lot. But part of the thing with doing the show isn't actually just the necessity of having to do it, but you read more and you get interested in more, so you want to see more and you want to be able to take place in the discussion more, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard. It's half the fun of reading comics is discussing them, and you don't want to feel like you're missing out on the discussion. Yeah, and it, it's 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 tough because you're, it's like a lawn. It will grow unchecked if you don't watch it. And, and you know, it's it's interesting because I wrestle with this. Because out of the three of us, I think I've had the reputation of buying the most even before I fanboy. Although we we, we are, very, are very very close. close. We're very very close. But you're you'll drop Lower. you'll drop sooner <laughs> before before I drop. Um, what I've been trying to practice because I buy a lot of books. What I've been doing is I've noticed that if I miss an issue, and then don't notice that I missed it. That's a that's a that's a that's a sign. Master. Yeah. That's a sign. If I um, sometimes I'll get about 15 books in a week and I'll only have time to get through the first 10. If I never get back to those last five, that's a sign. Yeah. It's got to be. I, I try to um, manage my excitement level around the comics. And if there's a comic that's really kind of dragging and I'm just I don't really care whether I read it or not, I don't need to be buying it. You know. Um, I just want to grab this rogue one before sure. we forget about it. So is it, there has to be a moment where you say, all right, I'm not actually enjoying this anymore. Yeah, you I know? have those a lot. I, I'm doing this out of obligation. I'm reading this book because well, I feel like I must. Right. You should really be enjoying them because that is what they're for. They're there to make you happy or forget about whatever's going on or escapism or whatever, or for whatever reason you're reading them. If you're not enjoying them, then don't read them, right? Don't I mean, read them out of necessity. Don't read them out of. Uh, you could be buying the Flash out of necessity, hey, and maybe not loyal, maybe not hey, enjoying it. Hey. And uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing Look that. Look at these sausages. Hey. But but right. I mean, if, it's, if it gets to the point where you're not liking something, you how many be doing issues it. then do you do? You, I mean, is it an arc? Is it a? I think it's a creative team. It depends. If they can't turn around on a creative team, then then you know like. How long you, do you give that creative team? Do you give them their first story? Do you give them two issues? Oh no, I'll read an arc. I'll, yeah. read, I'll read. See, the I'll read arc. one to two issues. Unless something is so horribly yeah. bad, I want to see if maybe the arc. Sometimes the arc doesn't make sense till the very end. Sure. Sometimes, sometimes it pulls it out at the end. For me, I don't so much do it on story, but tone. Let's if, keep if, it. If, if, if a tone in the dialogue, I can just you know like they're not what I want. Mm -hmm. You can tell. You know from the first half an hour of watching a movie, usually right. whether it's a movie for you. Let's keep in mind though that many a book that you boys read and enjoy now, you at one point dropped, scalped. I never dropped scalped. He you dropped scalped. I did. scalped. Yeah. 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 So I'm just saying that, that it happens. Well, also that, for know. me, it's it's like yeah. if I'm in a bad mood the day I get a book, especially if it's like number it. one and I don't want to add any more books, that's a bad day to be a new book. <laughs> you know? So basically, publishers look at Josh's uh, mood on the Wednesday and and, and send him an email. Yeah. Ask yeah. how he's feeling. Hey Josh, how you feeling? Hey Josh, Joe Casada here. We got a couple new books this week. Is I'm okay? telling you, I'd give him more of the benefit of the doubt if they did that. <laughs> uh, so do we? Ha so when we're gonna drop a book, how do we know? Like for me. Right, let's take Flash. We could mention Flash. It's very. If you listen to our weekly show, you know it's like up. our audio show. We, 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 I've dropped the Flash after many years. I gave it like five bad issues in a row before I realized this was not turning around. $15. How many? How? I mean, is there a sign? Is it characterization? Is it the plots are redundant? Is it all of it? Oh. Is it indef indef indefinable? Um, it's indefinable for me, really. It's, it's, it's a combination of all the books that I'm buying, satisfaction, sense of loyalty, Flash is my tentpole, Flash is my X-Men of DC, so like I'm going to be in it thick and thin. Um, for yeah. me, it's, it's, it's UG moments. Yeah. It's how many times the reading moment, the issue, uh, I just go, ugh. Uh, and, and, and uh, or if I'm having, or, or, or conversely, the laughter moments, or, right. the, or, the, or like, the fist in the air fist moment. Fist pump, yeah. 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 Um, which are few and, few and far between. You don't read Buffy, that's why. Um, well, his final question, which is actually our final question on the show, is... Thank God. No, I'm, I'm so hungry. Hungry. Seriously, we love your emails. It's, just, it's just 102 hard. degrees out here. <laughs> what would you consider to be your top five titles that you're currently enjoying the most in issues? <laughs> Going out on a gimme, huh? No, we, a I'm, we've never actually talked about recently what our top five current titles are. Uh, wow. I mean, I, and this is, this is, I don't mean, uh, this is not by no mean to brag or anything like that. I'm not proud of this fact, but I recently just started using a pull list at my store and I, that required me to go through and tell them what titles I want to buy. Uh -huh. I've never done this exercise since about 1994. I am currently collecting over 75 different single issue titles. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. So pick that. five from that. Your five favorite. 
My favorite, the five, fa the five I love you. that I look forward most to. All right, yeah. I'll go. Is um not not the five you'll, not not like the five will never stop reading. The five you like the most the right now. The ones you've been enjoying right. for a long enough time. Okay. Go go Ooh, for it. This is tough with no prep. Um, we fly in blind without a net here. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna say uncanny only because I only oh, no no because I, I enjoy it. I always enjoy, no good or bad. I enjoy it. It's become a comedy of errors. You know, so like that's you know that's one. Um, you see, it's tough because like I want to say Captain Britain, but only one issue's come out. Two. You know? two. Um, two issues have come out. Two issues have come out. Right. Two issues have come out. Um, uh, I would say Invincible. I'm enjoying that. Um, wow, this is really really hard. Uh, Justice Society of America. Yep. And um, and the Young Lars. Interesting. It's a Vertigo book. So you'd really keep Captain Britain? I mean, I liked the first couple issues, but... Hey, I'm, I, again, it's loyalty. I love Captain Britain. I love Captain Britain. I gotta go? You gotta go. Powers? Oh, that's Criminal? a good one. Criminal? Oh, that's a good one. Scalped? <laughs> fables. Jack of Fables. Fables. Definitely Fables, not Jack. You got one more. It's gotta be some soup. Nova. Ooh, I'm really wow. enjoying every issue of Nova, Nova that comes out. Nova is brilliant. Out. Nova's great. I mean, I, that's sorry. Okay, no. good job. No. <laughs> hey, man. I he made me buy it. I'm yeah. sorry. It's a. It I, is. I've had. I've got you, you for all the ones that I've recommended. You guys laughed at. I introduced you to New Avengers. I've introduced you to Nova. I've got. Good Nova is continually. I'm shocked that he loves it so much. It's, it's a fiction. really good book. Guardians of the Galaxy is also a good book. This is a really tough, really tough question. Um, Do you remember when it used to be when it was easily Detective Comics at the top of that list? These were good days. It's a really well, good book. It's good now. These it's days. a really good no, book. No, I'm talking about the Rocky years. Yeah, I know. Um, that was only a couple of years ago. I would say Queen and Country if it was still coming out. Jesus, Justice Society would be number one. Not number one, but would be on the list. Um, God, I'm gonna keep drinking until like, an answer comes to me. Um, what are the five best books? Get air, man. Well, you. Uh... The grill is almost clear. We have two lone wings left. So I got to, I got till then to figure out. Um, no, not really. <laughs> this one I don't really like the looks of this. Cri criminal. <gasps> I didn't say Captain America. I, what Captain I, America. I, what did I trade my last? What was my last book? I said Nova. Nova. I'm sorry. Captain America beats Nova. Oh, fair. I, uh, I, I mean, yeah. Captain America. That's what I was looking for. Captain America is, I think, my favorite book. Yeah. Um, uh, criminal scalped. Um, Justice Society. Justice Society yeah. and. Um, crap. Buffy. Buffy's really, really good. Last wing. I think if I was buying Invincible or Walking Dead, that those would probably make the list. If, if oh, yeah. I buy them in trades. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I buy Invincible. So those are our, our five favorite rough <sighs> More or less. <laughs> I guarantee you we forgot something. Anyway. Uh, see, we'll... the grill is empty. Show is done. I've turned the heat off. Tell them where to go. Thanks for sending your emails in. We enjoy reading them. We always get tons of them. We like doing these shows occasionally. If you want to send more of them, you can email contact at ifanboy.com. We read them on our weekly audio show. We read them here. Do them on the website. Do them on the website. Uh, you can uh, call our voicemail, same sort of thing, at 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. Again, we do a voicemail show every once in a while on the video show. We use them on the audio show. Yeah. And uh, be sure to head over to ifanboy.com where you check out all the comics that come out every week at ifanboy.com slash comics, as well as all the great discussion and stuff like that's going there. We've got our weekly audio podcast you can check out. And be sure to head over to revision3.com forward slash ifanboy where you can find the discussion forums, as well as our weekly episodes come out every Saturday, as well as the uh, daily ifanboy minis, which are a lot of fun. So It's freaking hot. I'm starved. Let's jump in the pool. Oh, there is no pool. Let's eat. Never seen